Well, good morning and welcome to Lake Center Baptist Church's online service. We are so glad you could join us this morning. Next week, we are excited. We are going to be able to finally meet back here in the building and worship together physically, be able to hear each other sing and say hi to each other in person, which is going to be great. Uh, in just a few moments, we're going to be led in worship by our worship leader, Devin Scott, his wife, Madeline, and one of our students, Cooper Smith. But before we sing, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for just being the awesome, mighty, wonderful God that you are. Lord, you are a God who is worthy of so much more praise than we could ever offer. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son to bring us salvation. And Lord, thank you for being a God who understands, who knows our hearts and knows our feelings, knows everything that it is we're going through, Lord. You understand these things, you know these things, and you love us in spite of who we are. So Lord, for that, we want to worship you. So it is in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Christ is my reward, nor my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that can ever satisfy. Through every trial, my soul will see no turning. Set free.
deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that He should give His only Son to make a wretch's treasure. How great the pain of searing love. The Father turns his face away With wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Every 
Don't they do a wonderful job leading us in worship? Hey, do me a favor in the comments below. Tell them how much you appreciate them. They put so much effort into this every week. And also in the comments below, do me another favor. Let us know where you're watching from. We know we have some from Louisiana. We have some in Florida. Uh, I think there's some in Washington and maybe in California that watches. I know we have a lot watching us in the Grove and Monkey Island area. Uh, if you're like me, you're probably watching right now, sitting on your couch drinking a cup of coffee. But let us know where you are joining us from. Also, today, as you know, is Mother's Day. And I just want to give a personal shout out to my mom and say, Mom, thank you so much uh, for everything that you do and everything you have done for me in my life. I love you so much. And thank you for uh, putting up with me and for not killing me all the times that you said you were going to. Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, to all you other moms out there, thank you so much for the way that you love your kids. Although we are unable to meet together physically today, we do have a video that we want to share with you before Pastor Caleb brings a word from God. Watch this video. Today is Mother's Day and we want to acknowledge all the women we're blessed to know. We rejoice over you, for your strength, your wisdom, your strong love, and your beautiful faith. Whether today is a celebration for you or a day of quiet reflection and healing, we're thinking of all of you. If you gave birth this year to your first child, our joy overflows and we celebrate with you. 
If you adopted a child this year or became a foster parent, we rejoice with you and we want to honor you in your commitment to changing the lives of children. If you continue to struggle with infertility, we are hoping with you and holding your hand in prayer. If you are exhausted and feeling underappreciated for all you do for a house full of kids, we applaud you, we love you, and we appreciate you more than you can ever imagine. And if you lost a child this year to death or miscarriage, we weep and mourn with you. And if your child is lost to addiction or to the world, we hurt with you and we join you in putting our hope in the one who brings prodigals home. If you live with painful memories of your mom, we pray that you will find in a spiritual mother all that you never had from a birth mom. And if you're one of those amazing spiritual moms, we thank you for stepping up and being there when others couldn't. If you're experiencing an empty nest for the first time this year, we walk with you in this new season and are excited about the next chapter God has planned for you. If you're single, we celebrate your strength, beauty, and individuality and join with you in praying for the desires of your heart. If you're a single mom and wonder if you have the physical energy and financial resources to raise and provide for your child or children, we want to help you, and we will. And if you're pregnant for the first time, we prayerfully anticipate with you the joyful birth of a healthy child. And to all the special women on this Mother's Day, rest and delight in knowing that we are thankful for you and we celebrate each and every one of you. Yes, and happy Mother's Day to all of our wonderful moms who are out there. On this day, we celebrate you and we thank you so much for who you are and for all that you do. And all of our wonderful moms who are out there deserve to be celebrated each and every single day. And on this Mother's Day, we just want to say that we love you so very much and we are so grateful that God has placed each and every one of you into our lives. So happy Mother's Day. We love love you, we love you, we love you. If you have your Bibles this morning, and I hope that you do, please join me in the book of Psalms and go to Psalm chapter 96. Psalm 96. And as you are finding your place this morning in Psalm chapter 96, I am going to read it out loud to us. Psalm 96 reads like this, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Would you pray with me this morning? And God, we come before your throne and we do say thank you so much for all of our wonderful mothers, God, who are out there. God, thank you so much for the way that they love us, for the many ways that they, that they give to, to us. 
God, for the many ways that they sacrifice for us. And Father, just for all the many ways that they ultimately show us the love of Christ. God, we just ask and pray just your favor and your blessings, Father, upon all of our mothers, God, who are out there. God, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for each one of them. And God, we give this day to you, Lord, as we just stop on this day to worship your holy name, to sing praises to you, Father, to um, study your beautiful word. Lord, we just ask and pray that you would speak to our hearts right now. Thank you so much for your word. And God, thank you so much for the truth that your word will never return void. So God, capture our hearts and speak to our hearts at this moment. We love you, God. We love you. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. So Psalm 96 is what theologians call an Old Testament commission. This psalm, Psalm 96, is a call for believers to tell the world about the reign and coming kingdom of the one true God. The New Testament Great Commission comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses um, 18 through 20. And Jesus said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations." baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And if you ever wanted to know um, what the will of God is for your life, it is ultimately found in this great commission in Matthew 28. You see, believers in Christ are called to make disciples of Christ through evangelism and to teach new believers to obey the commands of Christ. And the commission found in Matthew 28 is a reflection of this commission that is found in Psalm 96. You see, Psalm 96 was a call for the Israelites to proclaim the worship and reign of the one true God and a call for the nations to come and to worship him as well. If you go back and you read in the Old Testament, Psalm 96 was used in 1 Chronicles 16 when King David brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. You see, the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God Almighty. And when the Ark of the Covenant came back into Jerusalem in 1 Chronicles 16, great praise and declaration broke out in Jerusalem. So this is a psalm of praise of the one true God. And it is also a psalm that is full of imperatives, calling on believers in the one true God to declare who he is, um, that he rules, and that he reigns. And it's also a call for um, believers in the one true God to declare his future and coming kingdom. You see, as we move forward into a post-COVID-19 world, there are going to be lots of changes for our church and lots of changes for our culture as well um, as we come back to church, hopefully and prayerfully next week. For a while, we're not going to be able to shake each other's hands or to hug each other's necks. Um, for a while, we're not going to pass an offering plate. We're going to take our offerings, of course, continuing online, and we'll have offering um, plates out in our foyer. We're not going to be passing um, plates. It's, only, it's also even going to change the way that we do our invitations here at the church. I mean, there's going to be lots of things that change for us as a church because of um, the, the COVID-19 um, pandemic that has plagued us. And while there are many changes that's going to happen um, for our church, there's going to be many changes that um, we have to continue implementing as a society as a whole, we need to understand that while there are many changes for our culture, that the Word of God has not changed. And the Word of God will never changed, change. The commands of the Bible are still the same. You see, the call for believers in Christ to worship the one true God and to fulfill the great commission, they're still the same. So this psalm that we're looking at today, Psalm 96, applies to us as we are moving forward in a post 
COVID-19 world. And if you're taking notes, you can hear some thoughts that you can write down um, in relation to Psalm 96. Psalm 96 calls the believer, first and foremost, to worship God. Verse 1 again in verse 2. The psalmist says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. And this was a call for the Israelites to sing and to worship the one true God. And it was also a call for the Gentile nations to come and worship God, as well as the psalmist says, sing to the Lord all the earth. In just two short verses, this psalm, it commands believers to sing to God and to bless his holy name four times. It says to sing to the Lord a new song, and this new song could be for the Lord's future reign on the earth. This new song could mean a, a song um, that has never been sung or composed before. Or this new song could be a, a totally brand new song from um, the believer's heart. The theologian Derek Kidner writes, he says, The new song is not simply a piece newly composed, though it naturally includes such but such a response that will match the freshness of his mercies that are new every morning. Look at verse 6. The psalmist writes, Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Look at verses 7 and 8. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. And this word ascribe that, that the psalmist um, uses here is used three times and it means give. He's saying, give the Lord glory. Give him the glory that is due his name. It also says, Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. What's that? Well, this is a reference to the Gentile nations during this time to come and to worship the one true God. Again, remember, this is a psalm of commission. And this psalm is calling on all the nations to come and to worship the one true God. Look at verse 9. The psalmist says, Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. You see, our God, he deserves fear. He deserves awe. He deserves respect because of who he is, because of his matchless holiness. And this is a psalm that calls us and all of the nations to give God this awe, to give God this respect. It calls us to tremble before him. So this psalm, it calls believers in Christ to worship God, to sing to him, to give him honor, to give him glory, to give him praise. You see, the worship of God is the very first value that we have here at Lake Center Baptist Church. As a matter of fact, this value reads like this. We will love and worship God. Therefore, we will gather corporately each week and love and worship God every day of our lives. You see, the worship of God and the love of God is the most important thing that we can do with our lives. As a matter of fact, Jesus says that it is the greatest commandment. Jesus says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. He says, this is the great and first commandment. And we can worship and love God every single day of our lives. We can worship and love God by the way that we live our lives for his glory. We can worship and love God in our homes. We can worship and love on God um, whenever we are driving in the morning, before we do anything else, before we go to bed. We can spend time worshiping and loving God. We can worship and love God um, whenever we are alone, whenever we're going for a walk. So we can worship God every single day of our lives. And also, one of the greatest ways that we can worship God is to gather corporately with the people of God. And I understand that we have not been able to do this um, the past several weeks because of the COVID-19 um, virus, because of the conditions that have been um, placed upon us, because of the restrictions that have been placed upon us. And as a church, um, we have been doing our part 
um, to keep this virus from spreading. And I just want to say again, thank you so much for continuing um, to just have your flexibility in this. Thank you so much for doing that and just for the way that you guys have um, just been so faithful in doing that. And um, I commend you for that. But I still believe that the gathering of the people of God to worship the one true God is one of the greatest ways to worship while we are still here on this earth. Now, with that being said, we are going to continue live streaming our services moving forward for those who might be sick or for those who cannot attend our um, in-gathering um, services here at the church. Um, we're going to continue live streaming those services. And I just want to say thank you so much for giving towards that project. And thank you for continuing to give towards that project. You're giving towards that project um, are really going to help us and bless us as a church moving forward. And while live streaming our services online is a blessing and it is something good, I believe that the physical worship gathering of the people of God should be given utmost priority. Why? Well, because the Bible commands it. Hebrews 10 says, Let us hold fast the conf confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. You see, corporate worship, gathering together to worship God as the people of God, it does so much for us. You see, corporate worship is a reflection of what we will, will be doing um, for eternity in heaven. Corporate worship, it allows us to use our spiritual gifts. Corporate worship allows us to encourage one another to keep on living for Christ, as the writer of Hebrews says. Um, corporate worship, it sets our priorities. It sets our priorities with our time. It also sets our priorities with our finances as we financially give to the work of God um, during our corporate worship services. So this psalm, it, it calls for believers to worship God. And we can worship God every single day, every single day of our life. And we also worship God um, by the way that we honor him as we gather together to worship his holy name. Next, this psalm, Psalm 96, it calls believers to tell of the salvation of God. Look at the, begin the next part of verse 2. It says, tell of his salvation from day to day. Again, this is a psalm of commission, and the Israelites were called to tell the Gentile nations around them of God's great plan for redemption. The word tell that the psalmist uses here, it means to proclaim, it means to evangelize, it means to tell the way how one can receive salvation. And as worship is something that we value here at Lake Center, so is evangelism. Our value for evangelism reads like this. We will reach people with the gospel. Therefore, we will spread the message of Jesus Christ verbally and by the way we live our daily lives. And as the Israelites were commissioned with the task to tell of his salvation from day to day, you and I, as believers in Christ, are commissioned with the exact same task. You and I are called to tell of his salvation from day to day. Romans 10, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. And as followers of Christ, you are sent. We are a sent people. The word preach um, that Paul uh, writes about here is, it simply means to tell. It means to herald. It means to proclaim, to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. It means to talk about the good news of Jesus Christ. And this call to talk about the good news of Jesus Christ is not just for preachers. It is for all people. And there are many ways 
for us to bring the good news of salvation to people by telling people that you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way that one can have their sins forgiven. You can, you can tell the good news that way. You can tell the good news by bringing people with you to, to church, by inviting them to church. You can tell the good news by sharing information and videos by way of social media. As we have this video here today, take and, and share this page and, and invite your friends and your families to, to watch it along with you or, or to watch it later on. You can point people to Jesus by making the worship of Jesus your number one priority. So as followers of Christ, um, we are tasked with this exact same commission to tell of his salvation from day to day. Next, this psalm calls us to tell of the sovereignty and the rule and reign and glory of God. Look at verses 3 through 5. It says, Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For the Lord, for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Skip down and look at the beginning of verse 10. The psalmist says, say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. And the word declare that the psalmist uses here, this is another imperative. It is a command. And it was a command for the Israelites to declare that there was no other God. You see, the nations that surrounded ancient Israel, they worshipped all sorts of false gods. And the Israelites were called to proclaim to these nations that their gods were false, that their gods were worthless idols. In other words, these Israelites were called to stand up for the one true God. You know, today in our, in our time, people call uh, Elvis Presley, they call him the king of rock and roll. They call Michael Jackson um, the king of pop. They call the, the basketball player, if you watch the NBA, uh, LeBron James, they've given him the title King James because of his many basketball skills. And these people that I just mentioned, they may be kings or, or kings of their craft, but we need to be reminded this morning that our God, he is the king of everything. There is nothing and there is no one above our great God. In my past life, um, before I became a senior pastor, I was a worship pastor. I was a worship pastor for around 14 years. And as a part of being a worship pastor, I would consistently you know, write and record music. And back in 2014, I recorded an album called Jesus is King. And about five years later, about a year ago, um, the pop star Kanye West, he recorded an album and he titled it, guess what? Jesus is king, and I think that he copied off of me. Just kidding. I seriously doubt that Kanye West was copying off of my album. But there's truth in that. You see, Jesus is king, and the truth is this, is that neither one of us, myself or Kanye West, neither one of us were the first ones to proclaim that Jesus is king. You see, our God has been king since the beginning of time. And as followers of Christ, we are called to proclaim that. We are called to proclaim his sovereignty and rule and reign and his glory, and that he is the king of kings, and that there is nothing or no one above him. And what are some practical ways that you and I can do this? What are some practical ways that you and I can tell um, the sovereignty and rule and reign and glory of God? And, and I think the greatest way that we can do this is to live like we believe these truths, to live like we believe that he is sovereign, to live like we believe that he rules and reigns over all. And how do we do this? We do this by submitting fully and completely to his word and trusting in everything that he says, even if it doesn't make sense. We can do this by living our lives with no other worldly gods placed above him. 
We can also proclaim his rule and his reign and his power and his glory and his sovereignty by placing him and his ways above everything else that this world can offer us. You see, as followers of Christ, we are called um, with this to do this exact same task that these ancient Israelites were um, called to do, to proclaim the sovereignty and rule and reign and glory of God. Next, believers are called to tell of the coming kingdom of God. Look at verses uh, 11 through the beginning of verse 13. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, it says, for he comes. And this psalm, it points us to the future reign of Christ on the earth. You see, the Bible teaches that one day, and really one day very soon, that Jesus is going to rapture the church. He's going to take believers um, in Christ, um, the church, he is going to take them immediately to be with him in the heavens. And the Bible teaches that that could take place um, really at any time. Um, And he is going to take believers in Christ to heaven to be with him in the heavens. And after that, the Bible teaches that there is going to be a great time of tribulation on the earth for those who did not follow Christ. As a matter of fact, um, it's going to be way, 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 way worse than anything that we've experienced the past few months in light of the COVID pandemic. I mean, the tribulation is going to be that uh, much worse. And after that time of tribulation on the earth, the Bible teaches this, that Jesus is going to return with the church to set up his millennial kingdom on the earth. And this is going to be a thousand years of peace and righteousness on the earth as Christ reigns here. And ultimately, that is what this psalm is pointing to. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we are to be looking forward to this return of Christ for his rapture of the church and ultimately for his reign on the earth for a thousand years. We are to be looking forward to that. And at the same time, we are to be telling others about this as well. Because that's what we're waiting on as believers in Christ. We are waiting on his rapture that's going to take us immediately to be with him in the heavens. And then after that, after a time of tribulation on the earth, he is going to bring us back to the earth to reign with him on the earth for a thousand years. And it will be a time of peace and a time of righteousness because of his perfect reign on the earth that's going to take place. So, As believers in Christ, we're called to look forward to that, and we are called to tell others about that future reign, about his future kingdom. And lastly, as followers of Christ, we are to tell of the future righteous judgment of God. Look at verse 10, and then skip down and look at the remainder of verse 13. It says, he will judge the peoples with equity. Verse 13b For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. And yes, our God is one day going to judge every person for what they did on the earth. But we need to understand this morning that these verses are not talking about God judging the earth. Rather, these verses are talking about how our God is one day going to reign on the earth whenever he does return to the earth. It says that he will judge with with equity, which means with uprightness. It says that he will judge in righteousness. It says that he will judge in faithfulness. So in other words, when our God does one day set up his kingdom on the earth, he is going to reign on the earth in perfect uprightness. He is going to reign on the earth in perfect righteousness. He is going to reign on the earth um, in perfect faithfulness. And again, as believers in Christ, we are to live for and to declare this future kingdom that is coming, this future rule and reign um, that is coming from our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, 
Um, the past several months, the COVID virus has made this earth um, a, a crazy place to live in. It's made this earth a very hectic place to live in. But when Christ comes to reign and to judge on the earth in his future millennial reign on the earth, um, it will be a time of perfect peace and a, a time of perfect righteousness because of the way that he will reign and judge on the earth. So how are we supposed to live in a post-COVID-19 world? Well, this psalm, it, it reminds us of how we are to continue to live. You see, again, the word of God has not changed. The call for believers has not changed. We are called as believers in Christ to continue to worship our God, to tell of the salvation of God, to tell of the sovereignty and the rule and the reign and the glory of God, to look forward to and to tell of the coming kingdom of God, to look forward to and to tell of the future righteous judgment of our God. In light of the return of Christ, Dr. David Jeremiah, he sums it up quite nicely. He says that believers are to walk submissively, worship triumphantly, Witness urgently, work fervently, watch expectantly. Are you ready for the return of Christ? You see, the Bible, again, teaches us that he could return at any moment. And the only people that he, are going, that he is going to take with him to heaven are those who have placed their faith and their trust in him for salvation. Why do you need to do that? Well, the Bible tells us this, that we need to place our faith and our trust in Christ alone for salvation because of sin. What is sin? Sin is mistakes that we have all made. The Bible says this, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Romans 6 tells us, for the wages of that sin is death. In other words, what we deserve because of our mistakes, because of our sin, is death in a very real place called hell. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the only way that you can have your sin forgiven is to place your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. It's through Christ alone, only through him, that you can have your sin forgiven and have the hope of eternal life. Believers in Christ, be encouraged today. Keep living for him. Even in this post-COVID-19 world, continue living for him. You will see one day that all of your toil here on the earth was worth it. Walk submissively. Worship triumphantly. Witness urgently. Work fervently. Watch expectantly. Our God could return at any moment. And one day, his kingdom will be established on the earth and he will reign with uprightness and righteousness and faithfulness. Be encouraged in that. Continue to live for the honor and glory of his name. One day, it will be worth it. Would you pray with me? And with your head bowed and your eyes closed, if you're watching this morning, and you have never called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from the penalty of your sin. You can do that right now. Paul goes on to say in Romans chapter 10 that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And you can do that right from your seat this morning where you are watching this. Maybe you're watching on your couch or your kitchen table or in your bedroom. You can call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. Would you do that right now? Would you come to the realization that you are a sinner? and that you need a Savior? Would you call on Jesus Christ to save you? Would you believe in his finished work on the cross? And would you commit your life to follow him from this point forward? God, we come before your throne and we say thank you so much for this great reminder that we just read about in Psalm 96 that reminds us that we are still in, called as believers in Christ to fulfill um, this great commission. We're called to worship you. God, we're called to tell of your salvation. We're called to tell of your sovereignty and your reign and your rule and your power and, and your glory. We are called to tell of your kingdom that is coming to, and to look forward to your kingdom that is coming. God, we are called to, to look forward to your righteous judgment and to tell of your righteous judgment that, that you will reign in one day on the earth in your future millennial kingdom. And God, we just pray 
God, that you would help us just to continue, Lord, living for the honor and the glory and the praise of your name. God, working for you, God, serving you, God, looking to you in all things, God, knowing that one day it will all be worth it whenever you do return for us, whether it be in death or, Father, whether it be, God, um, as you rapture the church. God, we look forward to that day. God, so use us. Use our church for the honor and the glory and the praise of your name. We love you, God. We love you. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. Well, thank you once again for joining us. Before we go, I have a few closing announcements. Would you do us a favor? We would like to be able to connect with you. So below in the comments, or if you're on YouTube, uh, there are some comments there as well that list links to different forms that we have made available online that will help us to connect with you. If you are in need of prayer for any reason, there is a form for you to fill out uh, um, and I promise you it stays confidential. If you would like for one of us staff members to call and to actually pray with you over the phone, we would love to do that. Um, if you simply just want us to be aware and you don't want us to call you, that's okay as well too. You can uh, mark that on the form and then we will respect your wishes and we will keep these things confidential. Also, if you are uh, just curious about Lake Center and our other ministries that we have going on here, there's a form that you can fill out asking for information on our student ministries, our men's and women's ministries, and just anything else that goes on here. So please fill out that form. Also, as I said earlier, we are starting back May 17th, which is next Sunday at 1045 in the morning, and we are so excited about that. But if you have never physically joined us here at Lake Center before, I know it can be nerve wracking the first time you visit. We have a form for you as well. It enables you to plan your visit. And what happens is one of us will contact you and kind of get to know you a little bit. And we will be waiting at our main entry whenever you arrive so that you can see a, a familiar face or at least hear a familiar voice. We'll introduce you around. We will give you a cup of coffee or a cappuccino or hot chocolate or iced tea or water. Uh, we'll show you where the bathrooms are. And if you want us to, we will even sit with you. Also, if you watch this morning and you have some spiritual questions, maybe you made a decision, maybe you want to know more about what it means to give your life to Christ, we have a form for you as well. Please fill that out and we will definitely be getting in touch with you uh, just to see how we can visit with you more, how we can answer your questions or to help you walk through this. Also, thank you so much for your continued giving. Uh, you have gone above and beyond to continue to give your tithes and your offerings during this time. And I know it's difficult. A lot of people are working less hours or maybe have even been laid off, but you have been so faithful to continue to give. And thank you so much for that. As we have said before, we are also moving forward with uh, online streaming. As I said last week, what we do right now is pre-recorded and then it's set to go live on Sunday morning. When we come back, however, we want to continue to truly live stream, which means we are in the need of prayer because there's a lot to go into that. We are also in need of workers. So if you are interested uh, in, in serving in this new area, please let me know. You can call the church office at 918-257-5202. You can send me an email that is tyson at lakecenter.church or just stop by the office and I would love to talk with you about that. We also need your help financially. Uh, this is not a cheap thing to get into. Um, we are starting with one camera and setting up kind of a basic control room in our old choir room. Uh, this setup cost about $5,500. Ultimate goal is going to be $15,000. What this will do is add two more cameras and it will um, improve the uh, studio or the control room by adding a better way to control the audio and video and different things like that. So if you would like to give to that, or if you would simply just like to give to the ministries here at Lake Center, there are several different ways that you can do that. One, you can drop off your check uh, or your, your money. 
um, just bring it by during normal business hours, Monday through Thursdays, nine to four. You can drop that off in our mailbox, which is a secure lockbox. It is located north of our bus barn, and uh, you can give online through lakecenter.church forward slash giving. Uh, you can also text to give, uh, replace the phone number with 84321 and then text your dollar amount. For example, if you wanted to uh, give $100, you would text 84321 and then the message would be $100. Uh, if you would like to give directly to live stream, you can do that um, in any of these manners as well. If you're giving a check or just giving cash, put in an envelope, mark live stream. If you are giving online, there's a drop down box for you to select live stream. And if you are giving via our text to give option, you can text just like I said earlier, the text to the number 84321, put your dollar amount followed by the word live stream. Again, thank you guys so much. I am looking so forward to seeing you next week, May 17th at 1045 a.m. See you there.